Hey everybody, Alice Side here with another item get review for you. This is one that I've been promising for quite a while and I finally got around to doing it. It is Yoshitaka Amano's The Sky, the complete artwork of Final Fantasy. So, I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's uh, jump right into the books and I'll do the review for this excellent little compilation of artwork from Amano-san. Hope you enjoy. Ah, uh, Final Fantasy. What was supposed to be an ailing career and company's swan song turned out to be a smash hit that would flourish into a multifaceted franchise that has thrived for more than 25 years. I probably don't really have to sing its praises, but here's a little bit of background just in case. Series creator Hironobu Sakaguchi has stated that he was about ready to drop his aspirations as a video game designer back in 1987. His employer at the Times Square was hitting some financial trouble, uh, going bankrupt basically. So he thought of the original Final Fantasy as a last-ditch effort to prove himself as a designer. If it didn't find success, he would quit his life as a game designer and go straight back to university. At the time, Square had actually refused to produce Sakaguchi's ideas for Final Fantasy, at least until they saw Enix's Dragon Quest garner some success in Japan. And the rest, they say, is history. The Sky celebrates this history nearly in its entirety. Published by Dark Horse Comics here in the U.S., The Sky was originally published in Japan over 10 years ago in 2002. In 2012, the compilation of work was finally released stateside as a limited edition run and quickly sold out. The first run of books sells for a pretty penny are quite difficult to obtain today. Luckily, Dark Horse recognized the popularity and did a re-release in 2013. The set is listed at an MSRP of $89.99, but I was able to find it on Amazon for $56 in the US, which is not too shabby if I do say so myself. A note of caution if you plan on ordering the set via the internet. The full set weighs in at a whopping 12 pounds, so be sure to pay attention during checkout if you're being charged for shipping. Something that weighs more than my dog could cost a small fortune to be delivered directly to your doorstep, so just be careful. I have seen it in my local Barnes & Noble booksellers filed under the games section along with strategy guides and like Sudoku puzzle books or whatever. So keep that in mind if you want to avoid shipping and handling costs. For the price of admission you get a set of three hardcover books encased by a heavy cardboard slipcase which is wrapped in a silky cloth. I've been pretty careful in maintaining the case but I've noticed some minor fraying around the edges of the slipcase cover which may or may not have been caused by dragging it off my bookshelf. It's nothing major, but I've had the set for only a few months and haven't really moved it around too much, so it might be something to be mindful of if you want to keep it in like absolute pristine condition. The books themselves are of a very large format too, measuring approximately 11 and 5 8 inches high by 10 and 5 8 inches wide. I guess that's not approximate, that's, that's, that's pretty precise. There are 576 glossy pages spread across all three books. These scans and images probably aren't showing the scale of some of these drawings all too well, but I can assure you that they're all quite large and use the majority of the page space. Each book is divided up by game, uh, quite obviously, quite in the same way that I'm doing this review actually. Book 1 covers games 1 through 3, book 2 is 4 through 6, and book 3 covers 7 through 10. Book 3 is actually the smallest in the set, believe it or not, even though it covers 4 games. This is because Amano's involvement was greatly reduced in character and monster design for the later iterations. He was pretty busy with personal projects and had passed the torch on to Tetsuya Nomura. Amano's expertise was still called into action, but mostly for promotional art and renditions of Nomura's character designs which were already set in stone. Since the entirety of this set is Amano's work, we should probably discuss him a little bit. Analyzing an artist's full body of work could potentially consume an entire lifetime, especially when you're considering someone as prolific as Yoshitaka Amano. But I, I guess I, I, I'm going to summarize as best I can anyway, so stick with me. Now in addition to all this concept work that we have in these three books, Amano has produced a sizable amount of art in other media as well. Fine art, graphic novels, children's books, animations. There really hasn't been a medium that he hasn't touched and been successful in, which is a true statement of his artistic ability. Amano is one of the truly creative souls of our generation, concerning himself less with fame and fortune and more with simply creating whenever and wherever possible. He's had studios in New York, Tokyo,
Paris. You name it, he probably wants to have a little shack somewhere where he can just sit and paint and draw to his heart's content. I will link you to an excellent interview he gave back in 2006 with 1UP.com's James Milk in which we get a look into his humble beginnings and endless imagination, as well as some of his philosophies behind how he works. I love that the majority of his concept work is simple and airy in nature. In his interview with Milk, he actually states that some of his most favorite things to draw are the simplest enemy designs. He said, I like the simple monsters too, like the bomb and also the slime, which are very simple. I feel as if this represents me more, so I like the simple designs. Like when a game or movie is a series, the main character of the monsters or enemies become much more complicated as the series goes on. But I like the original the most, the plain, raw character. Raw would be a great way to describe some of the artwork throughout these books. While all the concepts and sketches are considered finished, they all seem completely unadulterated and fresh too. I should reiterate again that I'm no expert on art. However, it's easy to get a little glimpse into Amano's imagination through all the media that he chooses to work with. The mix of charcoal and water-based paints and some pen here and there really draws out that fantastical dreamlike style that he's become known for. All of his drawings, regardless of what they represent, have a lot of motion and flow to them, drawing the eye around the entire work, which is a skill that I'm sure most artists envy. I think what has attracted me most to Amano over the years is how his art is interpreted in-game. When you look at his concept art alongside the sprites that were generated from it, it really makes you appreciate the games for what they were, especially the earlier ones. Imagination has always been a key factor in video games, but back in the NES era, and even today with tabletop gaming, the player is sometimes left to interpret what characters may look or act like. Amano and the original team behind Final Fantasy had come to the conclusion that it was best for the team to use his concept art as a guideline rather than something that should be strictly adhered to. Amano had been developing his characters in pixel form, but the team decided it best that he do the concept and just leave the translation to pixels for them. He had said that this worked out well and he thinks of the in-game character icons as symbols that represent his art, rather than direct translations. Now, you may have noticed that I've been referencing outside material in interviews quite a bit throughout this review. Perhaps the only flaw with this beautiful set of books is its lack of these materials. I really wish there was a recent interview with Amano included, or even some sort of contextual information, because otherwise the art in these books has very little perspective. I know Amano is a very humble and modest man, but he doesn't shy away from talking about his work and usually provides some pretty cool insights when he finds the time to answer some questions. For me anyway, that would have raised this collection far and above any other in terms of quality. I'll link you to a couple of interviews and articles that I've enjoyed reading over the years since they help you understand the process behind the art a little more. Overall, I absolutely love this collection of work. As a self-professed Final Fantasy geek, they evoke a lot of fond memories of sitting with friends and pushing through the stories and adventures that Square presented to us. As of late, it could be argued that they've stumbled a bit in regards to quality, but perhaps that's just the awkward haze of nostalgia blinding us from enjoying the new. Even if Amano isn't directly involved with them anymore, I believe he laid down some solid roots for the series to build on, <laughs> as if that wasn't evident enough already. The Sky is an excellent way to commemorate 25 years of Final Fantasy, and I hope that we're fortunate enough to see the series continue in its own strange way for many more years to come. If you did happen to have any questions or wanted me to show off anything else specific to the books, please let me know down below in the comments and I'll try to do my best. Hopefully this was a good overview of the books, and I would definitely recommend picking them up if you're a Final Fantasy fan. So thank you guys for watching again. I do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the video. This has been Alice Side with an item get review, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bonus round. Did you know Freddie Mercury almost made an appearance in Final Fantasy VI? Or how about the Chocobo who almost looked like a skinned chicken? Seriously, look at look at Boko. He looks like a nightmare. At least the Magus sisters stayed pretty true to form. That face, though. <laughs>